What's up, Sim Racers? Larry TJR Sim here, and today we're going to be reviewing the AOLogs handbrake. So, I've been using this handbrake for three and a half weeks now. Uh, I've been banging through the through my gears with my AOLog sequential shifter and e braking all around the corners in Dirt Rally 2.0 uh, and other various sims, but mainly Dirt Rally 2.0. And this is this little handbrake has worked flawless. Don't let the size fool you. It is compact, heavy unit, all stainless steel construction. Uh, real quick, what you get out of the box, if you haven't seen my unboxing, is you get, of course, the unit itself. You get an aluminum uh, handbrake handle that is ribbed it, you, for grip. You also get an aluminum uh, shaft. Together, these uh, equal up to six inches, I believe. And uh, perfect height wise, as far as uh, if you're mounting it next to your sequential shifter, makes it convenient to grab to each one sequential shifter and then handbrake and ripping it around the corners. Uh, you also get the USB 2.0 cable with the, uh, with the ferrite uh, filters on there. Uh, you get a desk clamp right here, which I went over extensively. Very heavy duty built clamp. Uh, I think you would pull down your desk before you bend or sway this clamp any. Uh, it's nice to see that a company thinks of multiple things to do uh, or, or, or provide us customers. You know, yes, we build a, they build a great unit, but they also give you solutions that are just as sturdy and compact as their actual unit itself. So. I like that. Uh, this thing is built to last, even though I just knocked that off. <laughs> it's a plastic little cover, but that cover uh, helps for when you are sliding it under your desk, you know, sliding it on your desk here, that cover will uh, keep you from marring up underneath your desk. And then along with that, it has these little rubber strips here that slide on to the bottom of your handbrake like so. Just fits in there nicely like that there to keep you from marring up the top of your desk so uh well thought out design uh, uh i think and uh so yeah great great little additions and stuff i of course don't use that uh as you saw in my other review hopefully uh or my unboxing i managed my k2 rig which actually mounts up uh great with these two holes here so <clears throat> anyway working great great uh great quality unit uh, going into the actual unit itself, we have a really heavy-duty spring in there that is putting out four kilograms of force, which seems to be pretty adequate for uh, hand braking around the track. And uh, all stainless steel uh, construction in there as well. It has bearings in there. It has, you will see, that black arm in there, which is the pitchiometer uh, lever arm in there. And in front of that is, of course, the blue LED light. Now, these units normally come with red lights, but you can actually change them. So, and I'm going to show you that software real quick here. This That's actually on the 2019 editions, uh, and uh, I already did a, 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 a first look at it already on my channel, so check that out. But I'll go over it here quickly with you and try to keep this in focus here. So now we got blue, right? Uh, as I move the dial around here, I can change the color. So we're going from red to pink to blue to cyan to green, yellow. Uh, get a picture of yellow. And then red again, although it looks a little pinkish. There we go. Red and red again. So uh, you can make whatever color combination you want, which I really like. It's a nice addition uh, to the package. Just gives you an extra little little uh little perk so we all like perks right here's an extra little perk in here that you can change this to your liking so really cool to see that they implemented that as well for the 2019 units and uh yeah i dig it dig it a lot so going on you know in a review you always inevitably have some some good and some bad and and then you know a conclusion so you know the good just go over the good real quick uh, because it's a lot longer than the bad, I tell you that. So the good is, I like the removable USB cable. Makes it easy to mount up. I don't have a cable in the way. I love that. I love the LEDs being able, I love that it has an LED in there for one. 
because it looks really cool at night when you're when you're racing and then uh then i can actually change the colors another plus all stainless steel construction very heavy duty unit you know three three and a half pounds worth right here in your hand uh you know it gets a little heavy after a while holding it but uh yeah i like it nice see-through uh cover that you can see in see all the inner workings i love being able to see the inner workings of of uh the mechanical uh, things going on inside a unit so i think that's really cool uh true engineers there to like to see their stuff uh going through its paces and use so i like that they are proud enough to share that with the rest of us instead of just having a cover over it uh so really cool uh the clamp stainless steel clamp another plus uh heavy duty clamp you're, you're like i said you're gonna pull your desk down before you bend or break that clamp a uh, nice polished handle and it is gripped a little bit ribbing here to uh help you with the grip but it's not so grippy that when you let go or it's really this way when you let go that it does slide out of your hands you know pretty easy though uh, but it does seem to offer a little bit of uh, grip to use. I mainly use gloves, so that's uh, working pretty good. Uh, of course, this is PC only, uh, is, is what this unit is for. And uh, if so if you're a PlayStation or Xbox fan, uh, you might want to look elsewhere. Uh, generally, those uh, people that run consoles, I know when I run everything on consoles, I generally use all the... Uh, the stuff that works with my wheelbase itself. So if you have Thrustmaster, you're gonna have the Thrustmaster equipment plugged in your wheelbase, so it'll work on your console. Same thing if you have Fnatic, you're gonna have the Fnatic hardware that plugs in your wheelbase that'll work on your console. Of course, I urge you to go to PC because PC racing, you get to try out really cool products like this and uh, get to use them and they're very compact and in and, and their design. So. Uh, more great th things about this. Okay, I said it's built like a tank. Uh, there's no chassis flex at all. You don't, even though this thing all seems to go together with like little, um, so this is a top plate and bottom plate's kind of the same and then the side plate smashed together and all comes together, right? With some screws to hold it together. You know, by itself, you would think it'd be uh, not as rigid. But when you put the whole unit together, this thing is like a tank, man. You, I mean, you could throw this across the yard and not ever have anything happen to it. Uh, built very good. So I like that. I like the construction of it. It's simple enough uh, that it's simple enough to put together, but it's also, you know, it's, it's designed in a way to where it's cost effective to make to sell it for the lower price that they sell it for, like at 165, which this unit sells for. Uh, same with the sequential shifter, it sells for 165 as well. So uh, I, I like that they put in some thought of, you know, how can we produce a handbrake or a sequential shifter and bring it to the masses for a low enough uh, cost uh, that people are gonna wanna uh, try out their products and not break the bank, but uh, offer a really good uh, solution and they knocked it out of the park with this uh, same with their sequential handbrake so uh, with that said the rest of the stuff that I like about it is the no side flex so when you're in use with this thing on the track uh, and I'm thinking uh, thinking to myself when I look at this unit what I think about is that wow this thing is small and compact um, I can put it close to my sequential shifter uh, which is their ALOG sequential shifter as well and uh, it's and, and the height wise of it from the base to here is about the same height as what my sequential shifter is so i like that it's it's very easy to move from one to the next and uh very fast you don't have any any slowdown i see a lot of people that that race and they're in their rig and they're grabbing a shift and they go grab a handbrake way over here and it's like where are you going you know that's just too far it's, it's too much time wasted to reach that far away being that this is designed to be so compact, both of those units together, you don't have to go but two inch, three inches, four inches, well, about four inches apart and uh, grab a, hand, a handful of handbrake or grab a downshift or upshift. So it makes it really good. Now, also with the side flex of this thing, it has no side flex. So inevitably, if you did have to mount it further away from you, right? 
or even when it's close to you, it's always off when you're setting, right? It's always off to the side somewhere. And you're always going to pull it a little bit sideways. You're going to put a side load on it before you make your actual handbrake pull. Uh, this has zero flex side to side. So there's, there is no, uh, there's no flex at all. So it's not like some of the handbrakes I've used where you grab it and you automatically feel that you're going to push it over until it's, to it to it stops flexing and then pull it back and then when you get get that side flex internally you get some grinding and you get some wearing out of parts this doesn't have that it has uh, solid bearings in there all metal construction and uh and no side flex so you don't have parts wearing out unnecessarily so for the price point you're getting a lot you're getting a lot of good design intent and uh and and, and build and some ingenuity that goes into this thing, right? So, uh, I like that. Um, also, you get uh, 12 bits of resolution out of this thing. So, what that what does that mean? 12 bits of resolution. You know, people will hear you know 10 bit, 8 bit, 16 bit, 12 bit. Obviously, uh, what that is is you know from point A to point B, how much resolution you got in between, how many steps it picks up in the, in the braking. So you usually see that in load cell braking for uh, like Fanatic products and stuff. There'll be 12 bits of resolution and stuff, right? Uh, and in the old days in the consoles, you could only get eight bits of resolution for it. Uh, so this is having 12, right? So from say point one A to B, if you only had three bits of resolutions, you would have one, two, three, and it would only be measuring each one of those points. Well, 12 bits is measuring all the little points in between until you hit your stop, until you go from A to B. So when you're having the handbrake here, here's obviously no, 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 uh, uh, no pulling on the, no locking up the rear tires, for lack of better words. No locking up the rear tires at this position, right? And obviously at this position, you're full lock on the tires. But if you just want to drag them a little bit, it has enough resolution that you're able to pick up little data points in between to just grab a little bit of uh create a little bit of drag on your rear tires to maybe rotate your car around the curve a little bit more based on your speed so if you're going really fast and you grab a handful of handbrake like in real life you're going to lose control of your car but if you can just create just a little bit of drag uh with the handbrake instead of it being a a a button and b button or even say 10 bits of resolution or six bits of resolution or something like that with 12 bits you have more points you can pick up to create a more subtle effect to have more of a uh, um, uh, an analog uh, pull you know to it so uh, anyway really good I like that seems to work really good I was testing out in dirt rally 2.0 as well and uh, you know, I'd, I'd go grab a little bit of brake, and you could, you, you know, feel it tuck down, tuck down, and then uh, when you lock it up, of course, you know, the back wheels lock up and stuff. So, uh, really a lot of fun, and I tested it out, and it actually works. So, uh, not that I didn't expect it wouldn't work, but it's cool to see it on screen work like that, too. So, anyway, uh, 12 bits of resolution is another great thing. Compact design, no side flex and lever. USB 2.0 uh, that you don't have to have attached when you're trying to mount it up to your rig. These are all great things about this unit. Uh, it's getting heavy to hold here after these few minutes already. Uh, but uh, what else is there? Well, let's go on to the bad. There is no bad. That's the great news. I haven't found anything bad about it. Uh, it works as it is instructed to work. It's a handbrake. It works as a handbrake perfectly. It has a progressive pull on it. You know, it's a little bit hard to hold it here and show you, but it has a nice progression and pull on it. Four kilograms of force. So that's what you get out of it. If you want it more force, uh, you're probably gonna have to shop for a higher end handbrake uh, than what this one is, but you're also gonna have a higher end price tag to go along with it. I think the four kilograms of pull force is kind of the sweet spot out there as far as, as uh, not being the heaviest loaded uh, handbrake, but not being too light and flimsy feeling, right? It's a 
solid construction. It feels great, but uh, you have enough pull force to have a lot of fun with, uh, but uh, and not being too light at the same time. Now, obviously, you can get heavier duty units out on the market. There's going to be a lot more pull force, or could be a lot more pull force, uh, and and uh, I've you know, tested those as well. And, or you can have the lighter end duty ones that are, have a lot of side flex in it and very light and it gets the job done, but it doesn't uh, feel good using it. So I think A-Logs is coming out with some great products that fit the niche of the middle ground for us as far as their handbrakes goes and, uh, and price right. So you don't have to settle for something a little bit more flimsy but gets the job done instead you can get something that feels like it's built like a tank and gets the job done while invoking this feeling of man this feels badass you know to to use it feels like i'm yanking on something quality and uh better than what my car feels like right so um they hit it they hit it out of the park i think with this handbrake so uh, with that said, there is no bad. It is as advertised. I haven't had anything go wrong with this thing. It is built perfect. And I, I don't think I've reviewed a product that didn't have something bad around it, about it. So uh, this works great. So anyway, all in all, uh, in conclusion, uh, you should go get you know one for you, one for your racing buddy. So y'all can go drifting around on the track. No, no I, I think all in all, it is worth your your look. Uh, for $165, you can't really go wrong uh, with this handbrake unit. It's working. I'm having a blast with it in, in uh, my sim racing games like Dirt Rally 2.0 that I've been playing heavily a lot with and doing a lot of testing with. And uh, yeah, it works really good out of the box. You know, it's just plug and play, plug and play. So anyway, I hope you enjoy this uh, look, or this review rather, my final review of my AOLOGS uh, handbrake. It matches beautifully with my AOLOGS sequential shifter. So if you're in the market for handbrake, check them out. Uh, if you're in the market for a sequential shifter, I would give them a check out as well because they're both priced for $165, fast shipping. Uh, so yeah, good stuff, man. And as I can say about it, when it's good, it's good. Uh, so there's not a whole lot more to talk about. Anyway, we'll check you later on the track. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any comments uh, or if you already have your AOLOGS uh, hardware, leave some comments below for others to, to uh, uh, learn from as well. And we'll check you out on the track. Until next time, I'm out.